We are live. Hey, everyone. <laughs> All right, we're just getting things started here. Uh, really, really excited to hop on live right now and talk to you about a special virtual summit that we have going on. Uh, before we get into that, let's uh, let's make quick introductions. Um, my name is Jante Delane. I am a co-host for the Speaker Branding Summit taking place next week, Wednesday, May 20th to Friday, May 22nd. Oh man, I am really, really excited about this event. But before we take a deep dive in there, I want to introduce you to our co-host, Jamie. Jamie, won't you tell them a little bit about yourself? What's going on, everyone? I'm so psyched to be here in front of y'all, whoever is out there watching. Hi. Um, equally psyched to, to be uh, putting this event together with Jonte. Um, so I have been in the event business on the production side for I don't know, 15 plus years. Um, I'm currently have been involved in all kinds of uh, conferences of all shapes and sizes and festivals and whatnot. No Jonte from that. And uh, we put our heads together and decide, decided we wanted to uh, conspire and, and put together a, a three-day event for speakers, um, for, particularly for new and more up-and-coming speakers, to give them some of the fundamentals for um, to build their business and their content and their brand and all of that. Um, so just just excited to be here and to be digging in on this. I'm I'm pretty stoked for the for the three days. There's some pretty uh, wonderful people that we've got uh, filling the the speaker lineup. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and we're gonna get to that uh, uh, in shortly. And uh, we also have some speakers that are gonna hop on as well uh, throughout the stream, uh, and they're gonna talk a little bit about some of the things they're gonna focus on during their specific session, what the deliverables are gonna be. Um, all that good stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna welcome them as they come in. So I guess uh, what I want to do now is I want to show a quick sizzle reel because uh, I like sizzle reels and I think it pretty gives a good example of what you can expect at the event. So uh, check it out. I have that theme song. Um, it's it's burned into my brain now. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> you can't help because it plays every single time you go on the website. So, yeah. So it happens, you know. I, I totally get it. So yeah, you know. Again, we we are focused uh, today on really showcasing what it's like um, to be a part of the event, and uh, we're going to break down the programming, uh, what you're going to get. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to have speakers hop in. Uh, and join us as well. Um, who are we? Who could we expect uh, to jump in today? In this call, folks that uh, I chatted with and heard back from, I think at the bottom of the hour here, maybe in 15 minutes or so, we should be seeing uh, Mr. Fr Phil Mershon, who is a director of events for Social Media Marketing World. He's with Social Media Examiner, so he produces that event along with a bigger team, obviously. Um, we could potentially see Pam Perry, who uh, Jay and I both know from various different speaking circles and events, who's a PR expert. She produces Speakers Magazine, um, among other things. She's a powerhouse speaker um, that'll be speaking on day one of the event. Potentially, we're gonna see George Lee, um, who is somebody who my wife actually follows on TikTok, who's a TikTok creator. Um, or at least that's how we came to know him. He's also an adjunct instructor at University of Oklahoma. He's a diversity and inclusion specialist and lectures a lot uh, on that topic. And we have a, uh, a panel um, on diversity and inclusion on day one of the event. He'll be a part of that. So potentially he's going to pop in. I think that's it. We had one other person who was uh, who had said that they raised a hand and said they were going to come in, but mm -hmm. she's not feeling well. Um, so unfortunately she won't be here, but at any given moment, any of these folks could, could potentially pop in. Right. And if not, you just get to look at me and Jente for as long as we're recording. 
<laughs> yeah. So um, first things first, let's talk about really quickly why we even came up with this idea of Speaker Branding Summit. Um, give me some insight on that. I mean, what, what are your thoughts as far as, uh, you know, um, about this event and, and why you came up with it and so on? Yeah, I mean, so I've been, as I mentioned, in this business for a long time, and I've I've worked with hundreds of speakers. I've seen a lot of speaking proposals. I've seen all sides of the you know the conference and festival business. Um, and for me, it's sort of a life goal at this point to um, help provide access for as many speakers as possible um, to to get onto stages and to convey their message and to teach a lesson. And there's just this expansive pool of people that are expert at something and have something valuable to, to share with the world. Um, and sometimes the event space can be a little bit insular. Um, and it can be difficult to break in and it can be difficult to navigate, especially if you're a new speaker. Um, and so for me, like I would love to do whatever we can to provide folks with the fundamentals to, um, to get seen easier by event uh, producers to help them, um, you know, fine tune and build and master their speaking craft. Um, to be able to manage their business and build a thriving speaking business without any kind of overwhelm or or anything like that, to be able to do it joyfully. Um, that was like my intention, at least, you know, when when you and I first connected. And, and like I said, we, we've known each other um, for a little while now, you on the speaking side and me on the production side. And we, you know, just started conspiring and, and plotting and scheming this. Like what if, what if over three days or so we provided um, – all the fundamentals that folks might need if they're newer, if they're, you know, more emerging, they're more up and coming, they need to fine tune some things with their business. What if we provided just a couple of dozen just world class speakers, really awesome folks that we know from the industry to teach them the various, uh, you know, bits and pieces and nuts and bolts of really building a thriving uh, speaking practice and business. That's yeah. uh, the long-winded explanation on my end. No, I, I love it, and and I'm I'm so happy that we had an opportunity to connect earlier on, um, you know, on on the speaking trail, and and um, I had an opportunity to speak at several of the events that that you managed, um, and so I I thought it was just a natural fit that we do this together, uh, and so yeah. I'm I'm it's it's definitely been um, an awesome process, uh, you know, putting all these things together because. You know, if you guys don't know, there's obviously a lot of things that go into the on the back end of events, and we want to make sure that we provided you all with a lineup that included the top experts in their field and and individuals that can contribute uh, to sessions that would allow you to take your speaking career, your brand, um, and even if you are a, a novice speaker, you know these individuals will give you the opportunity to really amplify your voice by including your message on many, 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 many stages, whether it be physical stages or even virtual. So I just want to make sure that I, I hone in on that point. Um, secondly, you know, I have been on the speaking trail for um, five or six years now, probably longer than that. And uh, I was not a, a seasoned speaker when I first obviously started out, but it more or less focused on me having a passion um, to get the word out and evangelize digital branding. Many of you may know me as the founder of Digital Branding Institute, also the chief strategist for Digital Delane, uh, which is a full service digital agency. Um, but we are also a part of uh, the background, the the, the engine behind uh, the Speaker Branding Summit, as well as many other summits. Um, I want to make sure that we are, have the ability to take digital branding and evangelize digital branding in many different uh, niches across the board. And this includes speakers, this includes real estate, medical, travel, so on and so forth. Um, you know, we really want to create events around specific niches that we are that would allow individuals and organizations to help build their digital brand and right now especially with you know this pandemic for all those who want to be a speaker you have the opportunity because you're already on zoom more than likely you've spoken with friends and family 
you already have the ability to immediately uh, connect with those individuals and share your story. So why not do that on a stage or or have a feed that is broadcast out to many, many people? So I think that the Speaker Branding Summit is very timely because trust, people are getting ready, right? People have a lot of time on their hand to focus on building their career, advancing their message and so on. So the Speaker Branding Summit can certainly help with that. Um, I think we have someone coming in here. I believe Phil is, uh, yeah. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, give him a call now. And, uh, we can. Hey, Phil, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Not bad. Not bad. You know what? I think I actually, uh, I think I kicked Jamie off the line. <laughs> But uh, we, we are live right now. Uh, Phil, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do? Yeah, I'm director of events for Social Media Examiner. I run our large conference called Social Media Marketing World, as well as a couple of online events that we do. We've been doing online summits since 2008. So we've been doing virtual events long before COVID. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> And then I'm also on the side, I'm starting a, a side business called Unforgettable Events, where I help entrepreneurs build events that are transformational and unforgettable. Awesome. Awesome. So, Phil, I, I know you have, uh, you're going to be participating in a panel for uh, event, organ or, excuse me, with event organizers. Um, what are some of the things that people can look forward to during that panel? Yeah, we're going to get into the weeds and talking about what we really look for. How do you become our best friends so that we love working with you mm -hmm. before, during, and after the conference? And I think we're going to dig into a lot of the kinds of attributes each one of us looks for. Like every event's different. Yep. You have to learn what, the, uh, what those organizers are looking for and the value. So we're going to talk about how do you figure that out. Um, using us as case studies, but then you can hopefully transfer what you learn from us to other events that you're hoping to get on those stages. Awesome. You know, I've had the chance to participate uh, in the social media marketing world. And one thing I certainly can say is that your speaker onboarding process is the best I think I've seen. You guys are very, very methodical when it comes to obviously selecting speakers and onboarding those speakers so that they can be prepared to present to your specific audience. Uh, so part of this part of this comment is is to give you kudos and props. Um, but the other half is to showcase that if you are a speaker looking to engage with speaker managers, event organizers, and so on. Um, Phil is going to provide some of that methodology uh, that he uses for the Social Media Marketing World uh, conference that takes place in every year in San Diego. Um, he's going to give you that, that methodology that he uses. And so you have to stay tuned, get your tickets. Uh, next week, it's all going down. And I, I really, really look forward to the panel session, Phil. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. Can I give one knowledge bomb today? Of course. To tease everybody? Absolutely. Yeah. It's very simple. Don't ignore my emails. <laughs> that, Respond in a timely yeah. manner. That's like, yeah, I think that probably drives every event organizer nuts is when we try to reach you and we try to reach you in multiple ways and we can't find you and you don't respond. Um, you know, we want to see you succeed. Like. Right. If you succeed, we succeed. If you fail, we fail. So we want you to succeed. Uh oh, looks like we cut off there. Hey, Jamie, you're you're on live now. Um, having some switching difficulties here. Um, no problem. With, with Phil, so I'm just going to go ahead and add him on. But he's act he actually uh, was giving a quick tip um, regarding. Uh, his uh, social media marketing world. So let's give him a call now. There we go. There we we go. made it. So, so, All right, we're back. Yeah, sorry about that, Phil. We, we were right in the middle of uh, giving a quick tip for speakers, and I believe it had something to do with emails. So if you can start from the top, that'll be great. 
Yeah, it's really simple. Don't ignore my emails. So, and, and that's really a metaphor for whatever way that we're reaching out, be it text message, be it messenger on Facebook, uh, be it email, whatever your preferred method, we actually adapt, try to figure out where you like to communicate. Like we're very adaptable in that sense, but just don't ignore. Like we're here to help you succeed. And, And because we know that if you succeed, then we succeed. If you fail, we fail. And so we're here for you. We want to see you succeed. It's a partnership. Um, Some of the mistakes I see speakers make is they think they already know what they need to know. Mm. And pride comes before the fall, as the proverb says. Mm. And I saw it happen this year. We had two of our very top rated speakers in 2019 think that they knew what they were doing, that they were all the hot stuff. They came in and they were our two lowest rated speakers this year because they didn't do the work. They rested on past success. And I'm a jazz saxophonist and I know that I'm only as good as my last gig. And so it's uh, the same thing in speaking. You're only as good as your last gig. You can't trust that I I knocked it out of the park for you a year ago. So I'm good. I'm good forever. Hmm. I've had many speakers show up in later years and they like their scores are just going down and down and down and down. So all that comes down to communication. If we can talk to you and help you understand the audience and help you succeed, you're going to do great and we're going to love you forever. I, I would echo that, what, what Phil's saying there. And, and uh, it, it can be a challenge for some on the, on the production side, um, knowing if a speaker's reading email, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and, and obviously, you know, every speaker's also got, has a day job most likely i mean they're busy people and whatnot um but for sure um if you uh, let us know what your preferred mode of communication is and and pay attention to that because we're trying to also manage you know 100 different pieces um that includes your session but uh but isn't isn't limited to it right yeah and so we'll save the other advice for next week how's that absolutely (laughs) So for all those who are in the marketing space and maybe under a rock and do not know what the social media marketing world conference is all about, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it's it's an annual event. It's been in San Diego for the last eight years. COVID may have its way with us next year. We don't know. But um, it's an event for any kind of business marketer who's trying to understand what's working in social media today. So we cover all the major platforms as well as strategy and content and as well as some professional development workshops that we throw in. Usually there's a hundred plus sessions taking place over the course of three days. Um, it's also, a, it's not just about the content, although that's the main reason people come. Um, but the reason they keep coming back is because of the community. So yeah. we really put a strong focus on connections and helping people find their tribe within a large conference. We've grown to as big as 4,700 people um, in one year. And so it's you know, it's not a small conference, but we make it feel small. And so it's easy to find people that are like you. And many people leave and say, man, that's like summer camp or family, the best kind of family reunion. There's the bad kind of family reunion that we try to avoid. <laughs> but... Um, that's why they keep coming back is they've, this is their, their community and they know that they can get questions answered and many valuable things take place. So that's, that's really what it is. Uh, it's, we bring as many of the best speakers as we can find on all the major platforms and what's working today, um, and get them all in one place to share their best tactics and tips. It's very, you know, action oriented, tactical instruction. It's not a big of bunch of big lofty ideas. Um, there are a few of those sessions that are strategy oriented, but most of it is like, go do this tomorrow and you'll get better results with your Facebook ads or on your Instagram stories or whatever. Awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I again, if, if you have not had a chance to go to the social media marketing world, I highly recommend um, those are, uh, I recommend a handful of events, uh, marketing events, and that certainly is, is one of them. Uh, Digital Summit is, is the next as well. Um, so, Jamie, why don't you uh, give us a breakdown uh, from an event organizer perspective of, of what people can can look forward to hearing at our event organizers panel 
for the digital for the uh, speaker branding side. yeah so so we have this great panel uh stacked up for day two of the event it's going to be happening um the sort of morning ish around 11 30 um pacific and it's going to be made up of uh junte and myself phil um also olivia brooks allen who um is the head of events for Landmark Ventures. They put on Social Innovation Summit, um, which is a big, awesome annual event as well, with a lot of moving pieces, um, as well as other strategic events. And then Stephanie Nix, who is who I know from from past lives in in the uh, production world, um, and has been producing large scale conferences and festivals, and and really working more on the tech side. Um, so once you are booked to speak and you show up at the event and you're showing up at the tech table or you're a keynote and you're getting ready to go on and you're getting mic'd up. Like Stephanie is the is is, is a guru in that area and where, where she uh, really has a lot of superpowers. So she's gonna bring that to the panel. Um, and we just wanna have a good candid conversation. I think a little bit about, you know, from these folks that, that work on large scale events, you know, what's the reality of right now? How did you have to, you know, pivot your event to this virtual space where we've all had to do it? Uh, you know, what challenges did you have? How did that change uh, the way that you look for talent, maybe, um, and, and and whatnot? And then we'll spend the bulk of the time, I think, um, unpacking some tips and advice from from each of these, you know, longstanding experts on what speakers can do to sort of endear themselves to event producers. What can you do to make an event producer your BFF? That includes the communication piece that Phil mentioned. That's a huge one, yeah. um, but showing up prepared, um, knowing who the audience is, asking a lot of questions ahead of time so that you're prepared and you're you know, creating the outcome for their particular event that they're looking to have, like you're adding value in that way. So we want to unpack all the nuts and bolts of that and things that, that speakers can do um, not only to, to get seen and to get, can get their talk considered and what stands out for, for producers like us on, on this side of things, um, but what things should they be doing on site and leading up to the event to, again, to endear themselves to the producers, to increase the likelihood that they might get asked back. Um, the following year to make sure their speaker scores, as Phil was mentioning, that those are, you know, maintaining a consistent high level and and uh, that they're providing a lot of value to whatever community it is that they're being part of. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited for that for that panel session, because, again, I think it's going to give people any emerging or even seasoned speakers some insight on how these individuals think when they are creating programming, when there are selecting speakers, and so on. Uh, and these individuals uh, are event organizers for some of the top conferences uh, in their industries. And so it's, it's definitely uh, a panel session that you do not want to miss. Um, so let's, let's talk about the programming for the Speaker Branding Summit. So there are essentially three days, right, that, were fo that has individual focuses. Um, let's run through from top to bottom. What are the themes for those individual days? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, day one is all about your content and your brand and uh, the art of speaking um, and breaking down the bits and pieces of that. Um, so we've got just an amazing stack to line up. So we've got an opening keynote from Tamsin Webster, um, who is one of the um, ex executive producers of um, TEDx Cambridge, one of the longest standing TEDx series. Um, she's just a powerhouse in the industry, killer speaker. She's going to set the tone for us. Um, and we're going to get into uh, the content fuel framework. So how to generate like unlimited ideas, um, both on the content for your for your presentations, but also for your social media, your marketing, like all sides of your business. Um, we're going to have a nice workshop on storytelling and how to craft um, your story, which is obviously very important for speakers um, on an ongoing basis. So we've got Mike Ganino, who's going to be teaching that. Um, then following that up, we'll have uh, Michael Barber, who we both know from the industry, who's, who's uh, 
and who runs an agency and is and is a marketing expert, but who is someone who I know that also consistently develops really beautiful uh, visuals and slide decks and that sort of thing to um, to really supplement his talk. So he's going to give some tips on um, some best practices on how to create visuals that are sort of the supporting character of you um, as the expert in the room and and not the other way around. Um, we're going to dive into TikTok a little bit. Um, specifically as a platform, because I'm really excited um, about the potential of TikTok, obviously with almost a billion users and a lot of adoption and just people having a lot of fun on there. It's also becoming a platform for business leaders and for speakers, you know, in one minute little sound bites to really um, share their expertise and, and do it um, in, you know, within that format and to build their brand and their platform in that way, in addition to your other favorite social platforms. And following up uh, after that, we'll have Carlos Gill, who we know, who's an expert in social media. We've seen on the speaking circuit a lot. He's going to come in and talk about other aspects of social media, things that speakers can do to use social media to build their business, things that you should be doing before, during, and after events, and leveraging your social media to engage your audience, um, all kinds of things. That'll be super jam-packed. Um, we've got a diversity and inclusion panel that will be uh, touching on on day one um, to really unpack a little bit, you know, how can we be making events more inclusive? How can we make the tent wider for more people? Um, featuring some speakers that are really veteran speakers who have been doing it for a long time, um, who have some some strong perspective about that um, to hopefully shift the dialogue a little bit, um, some paradigm shifts. And then closing out day one, uh, we're going to talk about reviews referrals, how to ask for them, um, how to leverage them from Pam Perry, who we mentioned at the at the top of the hour um, that we hope will be able to join us. Um, little flavors of PR because that's her expertise. Mm -hmm. And that'll close us out for day one. So then day two is all about the business of your speaking business. And it breaks down like all the nuts and bolts that are probably the biggest questions that as a, as a event organizer and, and sometimes speaker consultant um, that I get. And those are, you know, where are the gigs? How do I get seen by event producers? Uh, should I be charging a speaking fee? How much should I charge? Like all those are super common questions. They're, they're uh, questions and answers that the Jote and I have asked, like and or have discussed in in the past um, in in past years. Um, so we'll have um, Grant Baldwin, who runs Speaker Lab coming in and we're going to talk about how to find gigs and how to do that effectively and efficiently and how to set your speaking fee. Um, we'll have Tamsin back for day two and she's going to um, talk about how to craft a, a really winning speaking proposal and how to pitch your talks in a way that gets seen by producers. We'll have a couple of panel discussions. Uh, the one that Phil's going to be sitting on with event producers that we mentioned, we'll have a separate um, panel that is filled with folks that made sort of the entrepreneurial leap into speaking, either speaking as their prime gig or folks that are entrepreneurs that are using speaking as an extension of maybe their day job or their professional life um, and some of the lessons that they've learned. Um, and we'll have a session on um, sort of the legal side of things, um, which is a little sort of overlooked, I think, at, at some of these events, um, but important um, IP, speaking contracts, setting up your business um, officially, your business entity as a, as a speaking business, those types of things. And then we'll also have a, a session on sort of uh, tech and, and tools, uh, sort of must-haves for speakers, um, both as part of your speaking kit and also things that you should have sort of day of the, of the show. And then day three is going to focus more on like wellness and peak performance. So it's kind of soft skills um, a little bit. Um, and we've just got an amazing lineup of, of four people on that day. So Chris Brogan, um, who's a nine-time best-selling author and, and uh, you know, Fortune 100 consultant and keynote speaker, he's going to come in and talk about sort of owning your voice um, and doing it with a lot of patience and empathy. Um, and then we're going to have Denise Jacobs, who wrote the book Banish Your Inner Critic, um, all about like maintaining confidence and not, you know, paying attention to that inner nagging critic that every speaker has to deal with um, on an ongoing basis. Um, it's it's definitely a practice um, that you have to develop. And she's written a really easy framework to help you deal with that. So she'll be getting, coming in and talking about um, resilience and confidence and, and some tips around that. 
And then we've got Neen James um, will come in who wrote the book Attention Pays and is just really an attention and time management expert. And she's going to give some great tips on really just how to organize your life and set it up so that um, it supports, you know, the way that you organize your day and your life um, really um, bolsters not only how you show up in the world, but also like sets you up for success in your speaking business as well. And then Kelly Hoey is going to uh, take us home, who wrote the book um, uh, Build Your Dream Network. And she's an expert in, in networking and building your network and somebody that I know from, from years back. And, and uh, she's going to come in and, and riff and, and do some Q&A on, on how speakers can really build their, their ideal network um, as speakers. And then we'll wrap it up. Gente and I will come back, and we've got some fun things to sort of close it out. But that's sort of the, you know, ABC day one, two, three sort of lineup um, that we uh, that we want to uh, bring to folks. Absolutely. And, and you guys are going to get a great deal of insight uh, from those action packed days. So listen, if you are looking to learn how to position yourself as a speaker or how to find speaking gigs that spark joy for you, um, if you're looking how to on how to get seen by event organizers and decision makers or even how much to charge for speaking fees all those different things are going to be covered in the speaker branding summit and we have three insightful days for you uh man i i'm really really excited about it in particular because i understand how much speaking has uh, changed my life and i'm not just saying that to be facetious i'm saying it because i am able to increase business from getting clients to establishing thought leadership. Uh, I've been able to travel the world speaking. Uh, and there's lots of opportunities available for speakers. And I even believe I uh, read a stat somewhere that says, uh, if you include speaking um, as a part of your career, you can essentially 3X your income. Uh, and so this is not an income claim, but when you, I remember one time just to tell a backstory where uh, I think it was President Clinton, uh, maybe five or 10 years ago, came to our campus in college and uh, I was a part of that committee and, and he was paid $400,000 <laughs> for a speaking fee and I, it just blew my mind. And of course, right, he has, he was the president of the United States at one point. He has uh, businesses and philanthropies and just so much to talk about. Um, and so if you are able to get in early and learning how to speak uh, on stages through virtual summits, if you have the ability to position yourself as a speaker and you just live life, whether it be running your business, um, running your family, uh, whatever the case may be, running an organization, you know, you'll be able to contribute some of those insights to the stories that you tell on stage. And that provides a great deal of value that can have a sticker price of <laughs> hundreds of thousands. So listen, we're, we're not all gonna possibly reach that point, and I hope some of us do, but the simple fact of the matter is, regardless of your uh, uh, phase in your speaking career, you have the ability to find the right gig that has the budget to pay you, and you would be able to not only get your passion and your story and your voice that could potentially make an impact on the world and also get paid for it at the same time. So that's sort of my individual testimonial about speaking. And really it's one of the reasons why I think that the Speaker Branding Summit is so important, especially nowadays when we are stuck at the house and we are looking to get out and we are finding ways to be productive and building our businesses um, or just having ideas that we want to communicate to the world. They're all being uh, steeped now in this moment. And I think ultimately speaking is a great way to get that word out. So that again, that's my personal testimonial. Um, and that's why I love to speak in front of audiences. And that's why the Speaker Branding Summit um, is here because I want to make sure that you have the same tools that I've had to, uh, to launch your career and to get started with speaking. 
Absolutely. I, I would love to piggyback two things on uh, everything that you just beautifully said, Jente, um, particularly about speaking. Number one, like one of my favorite speakers in the world is Anne Hanley, um, who I also know you also know. Yeah. Um, and she 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 made the distinction for me um, one time when we were chatting, I think, for a podcast. Um, there's a difference between being a professional speaker and being a professional who speaks. Um, and certainly, you know, there's some folks that may just show up and they'll get on stage and they'll do their thing. And maybe it's, a, you know, something they have to show up and, and do for their company or whatnot, or they make it about them and it's about their ego. And then there's people who are speakers with a capital S on their chest um, who get that they have an opportunity to like really transform an audience and to make a difference. What I would say about every aspiring speaker is that there's only one you and there is a lot of work that we need to do in the world to create prosperity and opportunity and heal communities. And there's so much great opportunity for you as a speaker to bring your unique lens and that we need to hear from you. And so that being the distinction that if you're really committed to being a speaker, a professional speaker, you have this incredible opportunity, regardless of what, whether it's a digital or a physical stage, regardless of what size the room is, like you've got an amazing opportunity to make an impact. The other thing I would say, um, we, Junta and I were, were chatting with Michael Barber the other day, and he also made the, made the point that when you get to the point where you've achieved some mastery of your speaking craft and you've really spent the time like really working on it and practicing and developing that, it really permeates to other parts of your life. Mm. Um, how you tell a story and how you frame and communicate something as a speaker on stage, then you start to see that show up in how you write an email, mm. how you have a conversation how you pitch in a boardroom, all those things. So it's very all interchangeable um, and, and so and, and incredibly valuable. And we're just so grateful to have, you know, over 25 just amazing world-class speakers that have been doing this for a long time that are, uh, you know, pausing and, and taking some time out of uh, their businesses and busy schedules to, to, to really provide you with, with some of the fundamentals. And it's changed. Uh, you know, I think... At the top of this, when we were talking about why we did this, I mean, we were first um, coming up with the idea and discussing do this, do, discussing wanting to do this um, before the whole COVID thing took place and, and all of that. We were just, you know, we said we want to provide fundamentals and provide some tools, as Jante noted, um, for speakers to like help them really um, get seen and build their thriving business and, and have a lot of fulfillment through that. And then coronavirus happened. And now we've seen from my side of the of the pond, like everything had shifted to digital and everybody was very fast and in, in pivoting and, and shifting to that and, and sort of um, bringing up webinars and, and that sort of thing. And we're not really sure what's, what it's going to look like on the other side of this. But what Gente and I were convinced was that the fundamentals that you'll get over these three days will serve you now when the only speaking gigs are virtual and they'll serve you in six months, nine months, a year, whenever it is when, you know, things open back up and people feel more comfortable gathering in spaces, whatever that looks like. It might be in smaller numbers. It might be, you know, smaller head counts in ballrooms. Like, and, and the events will adjust to that. But this, these, these um, tools and tactics and strategies that you'll get will serve you equally well, you know, regardless of what the, what the platform is. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned something earlier that was really interesting uh, as far as what uh, Anne Henley uh, said. There's a difference between professional speakers and professionals who are speakers. Um, oh, see, professional speakers and uh, professional professionals who speak. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, 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 there's, there's an obvious change when it comes to the way things are communicated now in business, right? You, you have more of a relaxed or lax business environment. People aren't wearing ties as much, uh, even on stage. Uh, you have people that uh, use curse words, right? You have, you know, people that um, are really bringing more personality to the stories that they tell. So from an event organizer, perspective and looking at sessions and presentations that really bode well 
and, 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 and that audiences uh, to our attendees really connect with, what have you found, right, uh, that, that works? What, what are the key elements of a presentation that is um, uh, highly rated in, in your various uh, conferences that you manage? I mean, I will, I, I will, I will definitely not speak for the whole ecosystem because you know, depending on what kind of speaking gig you're talking about, like a corporate speaking gig is going to have maybe a very different um, uh, objective and goal. But speaking just from sort of the the conference end of the industry, um, for the ones that I work with, I mean, it's really just about: Are you? A, creating some sort of transformation. B, are you making the people in the room a little bit smarter and a little bit better at what they do? So I'm involved with marketing conferences on a regular basis. Um, that Those are obviously, as Phil had noted as well earlier when he was in and, and talking about sort of the DNA of social media marketing world, like providing very, for the most part, very tactical um, types of things um, that marketers can then take and they can implement. So I think that's, key at least in my corner of the world like those are the um the sessions that we see uh get rated the highest so michael barber is one who is con consistently you know at least for digital summit series like he's top five or ten rated speaker um carlos gill is another one um there's a number of other speakers that you and i know gente that really provide a, a very clear message i think they're very like intentional and simple about it um, and and they just provide a lot of uh, tactical know-how. Now that doesn't mean that you know the aspirational and motivational speakers and and whatnot are sort of out here in the cold, or that they don't have a place at at, at a marketing conference or whatnot. I mean, I think there's definitely um, room at the table for a lot of different people. I think that the ones that that really connect with people. Um, are the speakers that do their homework ahead of time and they know who the, they, they talk to the organizers and they learn about who the audience is, you know, what's their seniority level, you know, what, what are, what are the goals of the event and, and the outcomes that the, that the attendees are expecting to have and they tailor their existing content to that. It doesn't mean that you have to create a fresh talk for you know every time you jump on a different stage you can have like what is your wheelhouse and what are your superpowers and sort of modify them a little bit but you should be customizing it a little bit depending on you know whether you're talking at a marketing conference or you're talking at some like industry industry specific industry event or you're in front of a professional association or you're in a corporate boardroom your content may pack and carry into all of those different environments, but you have to be able to be a little bit flexible. And it's really just um, comes, it starts with knowing knowing who the audience is and, and being able to be very clear about meeting the objectives um, that they have. Absolutely. So again, you know, I definitely think that uh, that's a valuable gem for any uh, speaker uh, to consider. And of course, you're gonna get more gems like that at the Speaker Branding Summit. Uh, we do have tickets available now. If you log on to speakerbrandingsummit.com, uh, you'll be able to pick up a ticket, uh, entry ticket, uh, as well as a uh, bring a friend ticket and an advanced ticket, which comes with a whole bunch of different perks. So go to the website to check out exactly what those perks are. Um, listen, I am really, really excited. Uh, I feel the momentum building uh, as we get closer to next week. Um, all the speakers are excited to be presenting t to you guys, and um, uh, Jamie and I are excited to be hosting. Really, really looking forward to it. So what we're going to do is I think we're going to wrap it up now. Um, I want to end this uh, with the sizzle reel, and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll inspire you guys to go ahead and uh, get your ticket. All right. So cue that music again. Cue the music. Here we go. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. See you next week. Bye now.